Welcome to this tutorial by River City Graphics. Today we'll be continuing the series on different methods of selection and we'll be discussing the lasso tools. So to get started we're going to open up Photoshop and here I just have a plain black document and to find the lasso tools you're going to go over to your toolbar and it'll probably be near the top minus the third tool down and you can see that if you hold down over the tool there are three different types of lasso tools. You have the regular lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. So to start we're just going to talk about the lasso tool. So this is a very, very simple tool to use. Basically, you just draw where you want to have a selection. So you'll just click and start dragging, and whenever you let go, that will end the selection. So you can see that you can just make any kind of shape that you want uh, just by dragging around. So this can be very helpful if you just need to make a quick selection. You don't need to mess with the pen tool and the anchor points. You don't need to mess with the magic wand and the tolerance and everything. You just grab this tool and make a selection, and you're ready to go. You can also take and make shapes out of these. If you make another layer, you can take and go to Edit Fill, and you can take and fill these with uh, a color or such. But for most cases, you're just going to be taking and using it to select objects out of photos. So the next tool that we're going to be talking about, let me just delete this layer, is the Polygonal Lasso Tool. So we're just going to select that. It's the second one in the list. And the difference between this one and the last one is that this tool will actually make straight lines. So you can just take and click and make lines. It's much like the pen tool where it will make straight lines if you don't um, hold down in order to make a curve, um, except that you don't get the uh, precision of changing the different points that you make. So once you're finished with your shape, you'll just go back to the beginning and uh, like the pen tool to close the path, the shape will change once you go back to the beginning and have a little circle there to denote that it's going to be closing the path. And then you have the shape uh, in that sense. Um, one thing that I wanted to show you with this is when you deselect um, and you start making another shape, if you want to close a path automatically um, when you're going to make the next line, you can double click. So say we want to make a triangle, I'm just going to double click when I make the um, second line here and it's automatically going to finish the path. So wherever you start making a path from, if you ever want it to just finish, you just um, on your next line click, you double click and it'll send it right back to the beginning. So that might be helpful for you um, depending on what kind of shapes you're making. So the last tool is probably um, the most dynamic, I think. Um, it's the magnetic lasso tool. I'm just going to deselect with Control D. That's a, a nice tip if you're making selections and you mess up. You can just um, go to Command or Control D and it will automatically deselect and you can start over. So I'm just going to turn off this black layer and here I have a layer with a red circle. And we're going to be selecting this red circle out of the black by using the magnetic lasso tool. So differently than the other two lasso tools, um, this tool has both the feathering option. You can see with the lasso tool it had feathering, and with the polygonal lasso it had feathering. And with the magnetic lasso you have feathering, and then you have width, contrast, and frequency. So you have quite a few more options. So what the width is going to do is, let me just zoom in here on the circle. Um, the magnetic lasso tool is going to try and see the difference between black and red in this case. So it's going to try and detect this edge of the red circle against the black. So when I start, I'm just going to click and start going around the red circle. If I start getting too far out around here, it's going to start making points out into the black. So what this width does is this tells you how far away from the red you can get when it's still going to detect it. So you need to stay within 20 pixels of the edge of the red circle. So you can add uh, more or less, depending on, you want to make sure it's a little bit higher so that you can um, avoid, if you're using a mouse, um, just accidentally moving the mouse too far and then being out of that range, you don't want to mess up your selection. So you can play with this depending on what you're selecting and how uh, steady you can keep your mouse. Or if you're using a drawing tablet, um, then you might be able to get away with something lower. For the contrast, what that's going to do is basically tell you um, how different is the red circle from the black background. So um, the closer that it is um, to the black, the lower the contrast needs to be. And since these are pretty well contrasted, I just put it at 50. I could probably put it at something higher, um, but it just helps Photoshop to make the best um, decision on where to put the points. Um, that's basically what all three of these do. And then the frequency is basically how many points it's going to make. You can see once I start making um, the selection it puts points every so often and this frequency will change how many points it makes and how often it makes those. So now that we're actually ready to use the tool, um, what you need to do is just go to the edge of the shape that you want to select or the object from your photo and you just need to basically just run your mouse uh, along the edge 
trying to keep it as close to the object as possible because it's using all that data to figure out what exactly you're trying to select and how different it is from the background. Now from this, the red circle is pretty different, so it's easy for it to detect, but in an image um, with lots of different pixels and lots of different colors, it might be a little bit harder. So again, you'll get the um, closing, and if you don't, if you can't see the closing um, thing for the path where it sh shows a little circle on your tool, you can just double click and it will automatically finish the path for you. So you can see we have a pretty nice selection and you can cut that out um, just by right clicking going to layer via cut or layer via copy. Um, but once you get pretty good with this tool, you can usually just take and go around something pretty quick. So you can also be used for fast selections um, as well, but it also has the ability to be uh, more precision uh, oriented. So you can see that you might have to touch it up a little bit, but you've gotten a pretty nice selection pretty quickly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something about the lasso tools as another method of selection in Photoshop. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.